Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to do a micro world effect for you. You've challenged me to that. Here is how that should look from Benny Productions. I'm a huge fan of him. So let's see how good I can do it. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and if you want to learn about photo editing, you came to the right place. So let's get started here and a little word of advice. I'm taking my sweet time creating this, so I might speed up several parts of this video. I will explain what I'm doing on the way, but still not a complete tutorial. Okay, first let's crop this to a size that we can use on Instagram maybe. Uh, I would say 4x5 sounds good. And then of course we want to zoom this out like so. Now we need to create that box and of course you can see here we have a level ground. How do we create a box around that? Well here's a trick. Go over here to your rectangle tool and just open up a rectangle like this and then right click on that and want to convert to curves like this. And now you want to remove the fill like so. You see you have only the blue lines and now I can use over here my note tool. If you're not seeing the note tool, simply go to pen tool or like hold down this and then you see pen tool, note tool. So you want to use the note tool and you can now move around these points and I can basically freely decide where this should go. So with that, uh, I will recreate the fill. Let's just make a color here and then we can hold control, click and you can see this is creating a selection and with the selection switching over to the image of my little volcano here, click on mask and then we can turn off the curve. You can see now we have this as a selection. So that's a good starting point. And then I will right click and duplicate the mask just to have a backup, uh, turn one of them off and we can just go in here and now we paint in the parts that we want to keep. I will just roughly do that right now, uh, just to give me a little preview of what's happening here. And then we can refine that in a second. It's um, no stress, right? Okay, at that point, I want to create a background for my image. So let's zoom out here a little bit and just uh, create a nice rectangle. You can see down here, rectangle tool, blup, we have the rectangle. I'm going to fill that with a gradient going from black to um, a nice gray value. Mm, that looks good. Okay. We're going to radial and then let's move this into the picture like so. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's put this in the background and already we have a nice background. I want to have a darker background, not the white background we have seen on Benny Productions because I want to have these light effects and stuff like that um, showing better, right? These little sparks here and stuff. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is probably to um, improve the mask here. So let's do a selection over here. Let's see, this is going... Yeah, we can... Let's try to make a selection here. Let's just see how far we get with it. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Okay, apply. Uh, then we're going to invert that and then I can simply paint my mask out again. I'm not going to take the sparks from up here. I will remove them. We will create our own sparks to just make it look a little bit nicer. I need to have this again just as a line. Let's invert that again. And this part here right now, where you select these uneven edge elements, this is where the 3D look comes to life. So next I want to create these side parts here and for that I will open up a new file. I downloaded some files. Let's place everything in here. Wow, these are very high resolution, all of them. <laughs> so we got to size that down a little bit. So 
So basically I'm painting in different elements here the texture of the stone, creating some more randomness. Okay, right now I'm going to copy flatten this and then copying over. You can see right now this is just one layer, which is exactly what we need. I'm unhappy with the perspective of the micro world, so I'm creating a basic rectangle in Blender and using it as a frame of reference. I'm readapting the mask to fit the landscape to the new perspective. Now I fit the walls to the new reference frame. And of course I'm readjusting the mask for both walls. I'm using Dodge and Burn to readjust the light on the walls. I downloaded some photos from the internet. This is a fire photo. I set it to the blend mode lighten, so I only have the bright parts. And now I'm also using a mask to paint out the parts that I don't need and duplicate the fire to get more of these beautiful sparks in there. I'm duplicating the fire layer and using the layer effect Gaussian Blur to give it a shine. Also I'm switching over to the blend mode screen so everything gets more bright and intense which is especially good for fire. Now I'm basically doing the same with smoke images to add some additional effects. Next I'm going to use a clone brush trick that you can see me do in my last tutorial. I will link it below the video to add some cool fire effects to the landscape. To get even more effect I'm duplicating the fire sparks and then duplicating them again to make them brighter. After that I'm using a mask and brush out the parts that I'm not needing and I'm using a clone brush to create more sparks on the right side to even out the scene. Here I'm using the same clone stem trick as with the fire, so I can create that lava flow on the side of the micro world. After I finish the cut through the lava river, I duplicate the layer set the blend mode to screen and blur it, then I cut out the complete lava river, also duplicate it, set it to screen, afterwards I remove the parts where I don't want it to glow and so you can see we have this nice shining light that makes it look really hot and powerful. I'm adding some text at the bottom to make everything look cooler and I'm using rectangles with a gradient inside that I convert to curve and use the notes to put everything in perspective so we have a nice shadow for our micro world. Inspired by Benny Productions I'm using a grunge map which is a photo of a surface with a lot of erosion. I put it in perspective, then set the blend mode to multiply. These little details help a lot to make the world look more realistic and add immersion. I'm using Dodge and Burn to make one wall brighter, the other one darker. This helps to look more 3D and also simulate light direction. Then I'm adding some more text and a separation line in between, which is a nice trick to make text look more sophisticated. 
That's it for today, my friends. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. Subscribe for more and see you soon. Bye.